Thank you for joining us once again. We're about to head into our second employee panel as part of this Autism at Work virtual summit. I, once again, am your actually autistic MC, Orion Kelly, and there'll be a no Q&A pane and no Q&A session in this particular session, just in case you're wondering. Um, so the Q&A pane either shouldn't be there or if it's there, it's inactive. A quick reminder too, the Q&A pane isn't for chatting, okay? So it's just for uh, asking questions. And this is going to be a fantastic uh, employee panel. It's very important that I think the people uh, watching, the, the thousands of uh, people watching across the planet understand that in, in order to really invest uh, in autistic uh, employees, it's important to actually see them for who they are, see the humanity in them, okay? It's, it's one thing to put all these things into practice, but you just need to see the person for the person. Um, I can help you with a couple of quick insights. Um, okay, uh, an autistic uh, guy walked into a bar. Oh, sorry, it was my dyspraxia. Uh, you know, an autistic guy called a cake shop to uh, order uh, a birthday cake for his wife, and then the cake shop said, okay, no worries. What would you like the cake to say? what you make talking cakes uh, anyway all right so let's uh, let's move on now now this uh, employee session uh, moderated by uh, asha shrida uh, sap quality associate so as i said uh, sit back and relax and enjoy this fantastic employee panel we'll get this session underway now asha welcome and over to you thank you orian Kelly, it's a pleasure to be here. So good morning, everyone. I hope all of you are doing well and staying safe with the COVID-19 pandemic situation. My name is Asha Shridhar and I work for SAP Labs India in Bangalore as a quality associate. This will be my sixth year with the company and I'm also an autism advocate outside the workplace. I am very happy and honored to be your moderator for today's Autism Summit employee panel discussion. So this is my first question for all of the panelists. Hunter, Liam, Senta, and Jack, Jack and Connor, please introduce yourself. Tell us what your job title is and a few words about what that involves. So Hunter, you go first. Um, hi, I'm Hunter Booth. Um, I work for NAB as a cyber uh, security analyst. Um, I deal with the more security of personnel and people in the bank. And all, um, I'm unlimited what I can really talk about, so to say, <laughs> and all. Um, so um, I'm in the four team right now. Um, I can't really talk about what we're exactly doing right now, as that is confidential. Thank you, Hunter. Now we move on to Liam. Hey, everyone. I'm Liam. Um, I'm a QA tester at Hexagon Mining. Um, and that involves me essentially uh, breaking the programs that we build so that uh, we can find issues with them and um, get them fixed before they reach our customers. Thank you very much, Liam. Now on to Connor. There we go. Connor O'Loughlin is the name and software testing is the proverbial game. I'm uh, hired by uh, DXC Technology and for the last three years, they've had me testing the websites for Services Australia. Like, I have heard stories about what they're like for the public, but trust me, when I say it would be a lot worse without people doing what I do behind the scenes. Thank you, Connor. And now on to Jack. Thank you, Asha. Um, my name is Jack Lines. I work as a drafter for GHD. Um, essentially, I work alongside engineers to produce the drawings that are used by the people who contract us on site or in constructing whatever it is that they've um, contracted us to help them construct. Thank you. Jack, is Centaine in the call? No, I don't believe she is. Okay. 
So let's move on to the next question. So my next question is for Hunter. So Hunter, were there any aspects of the recruitment process for your current job that made the process better for you? Um, one of the biggest things I say was it was not a simple sit down and talk. Um, but I went through the down download program um, supported by DXC. Um, based on the whole thing was a bit of introductory to what the whole thing will be about. And then they did a, what do you call exercise and a mini project just to see how the group worked as a um, project and into the area of IT and all. And um, it was one of the most, it was really nice because it allows you to show your skills and not put a huge amount of pressure on the one day. And it's not all about how good you are at social speaking when you're talking about IT or security or analyzation. It was more about the skills you have, what, how fast you can pick up these basic skills and how well do you organize and do the project. So that was really helpful as it meant that you didn't get, um, I would say, well, we interview questions where um, they say one thing, mean another thing, as has happened to me at times with interviews, or they don't want a deep dive into what they've asked you they just want a service level or something but they didn't ask for a service level question so it's very nice when those are the people that are doing actually knew what they're asking for and actually was able to chat discuss and show our skills and what we can do to learn for what they asked us for i don't know over a period of time instead of a short 30 minute here's your talk your early chance pressure and just verbal stuff where you don't really can't do easy well show off what you can do or what skills you have is more just service level what they f think you could do and not based on some simple or non very understandable questions okay thank you for the answer hunter since centane has joined into the call centane please introduce yourself tell us what your job title is and a few words about what that involves hi everyone <laughs> I guess uh, my name's Tain and I my job title that but um the picture I work at is um stock person, so pretty much what I do is I feed sales, look after newborn picnics, including ways that we get on the teats so, so they get the first uh, bit of milk and feed uh, like healthy feed feed our silos and uh, <sighs> And then around the two-day mark, I do help with some tail docking piglets and give them iron and the supplement called bait cups. It pretty much helps. Like having, it's really with the vaccination sort of thing, to help them dry. And yeah, I guess help out with what's needed and stuff like that around the farm. Okay. Thank you for the answer, Santane. My next question is for Liam. So Liam, what advice do you have for employers thinking about recruiting people on the autism spectrum? Um, the best thing to consider about um, employing somebody on the autism spectrum um, is to ask them for any accommodations they require um, and actually make those accommodations. Um, it's very, very helpful to us if, if we can have um, those accommodations made to us, whether it be um, wearing, being allowed to wear headphones to listen to music while we work, um, being in a quiet section of the office, a, low, a dimly lit section of the office, because I know that lights sometimes are very um, distracting to us if, if they're quite bright. Um, so it's, it's things like that. And the accommodations that can be made should be made if um, if they can be, because it's you can they will we will work much much better if accommodations that we require can be made. Okay, thank you for the answer, Liam. My next question is for Centane. So Centane, do you have a mentor or someone that at work that supports you? I just forgot to um, answer um, something for the first question. Is that okay if I go back? About, I forgot to mention something that I do at work for the first question. Can I go back to the question, previous question or not? Um, yes. I, um, okay. So I forgot to mention that about 
10 days old, when the pickles are about the 10 day old mark, give them a special feed to transition to mum and help them with raining. So. Okay. One, I forgot. Okay. okay. And the mentor question. Yeah, I've been, that's the one with, I'm asking now, isn't it about the mentor at work? Yes. Do you have a mentor or someone that at work that supports you? Yeah, I've been um, blessed with more than one mentor. Several people at work have supported me. My main mentors are um, two co-workers um, called Anne and Christina that have always answered questions without judging me. <clears throat> um, and <coughs> have supported me with both personal and work-related issues. Um, I, I enjoy having a laugh with them and they both, when, when I first started um, working on Christmas, um, they both invited me over to um, their house for um, joining the family for Christmas lunch and my work cluster and probably transport. Um, my too difficult for me to attend my own family lunch. Also, um, both my previous boss and my current boss, Shane, um, have been very supportive of me through not just, again, not just work, but also with issues outside of work. Um, and as those of you who read my bio know that I don't, as I don't drive a couple with a co-worker, who's been very good to have a chat to if I've had a tough day at the office. And also, um, like, and we started at the same time as well. Um, and when I first applied to the Autism and Agriculture Program, um, Kirsty Richards was very supportive and still is by email. And then, but I've got most of my co-workers have been supportive as well. Okay, yes. thanks for the answer, Santane. My next question is for Jack. So, Jack, were there any aspects of the recruitment process for your current job that made that process better for you? Um, I, I would say there are. First of all, I didn't even really go in for a standard interview. Instead, I went into GHD for a planned meeting. And basically, the discussion was who I am, what my autism means to me, kind of skills I have, even the hobbies that I have. And at that point, we worked backwards with what sort of vacancies there are at GHD and what sort of positions there are that I could well fill. And that led me to filling in a role coming up as a drafter um, because that was a good fit for me and the, the role worked well. Okay. Thank you for the answer, Jack. My next question is for Connor. So Connor, what part of being autistic do you think is a strength? And how do you think that makes you excel at work? Okay, well, I am of course speaking from my own personal experience because it is different for everyone and not everyone has the same job and uh, different employers have different requirements, but myself being a uh, software test analyst, I've found uh, traits that have really helped me in this workplace. Uh, my, uh, let's see, attention to detail, uh, inquisitive nature, and my penchant for breaking things. Like, my mom tells me that uh, back in the day when her and dad were picking out toys for me, they would ask each other, is this Connor proof? Because if it had the slightest weakness or flaw that they could find, it did not stand a chance. And uh, since coming here and uh, talking with the business analysts and the developers, they'll send me details for the uh, update they're making to the website. 
the various functions and combinations of them they want me to try. I'll go through all of that and then go, hang on, uh, we haven't tried this one yet. What will happen if I do that? And then the website crashes. I mean, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I have been quite an asset, much to the frustration of the developers. I mean, I'm like the Fred Durst of my team because I break stuff. And not once before coming here did I think that was a positive attribute. So, yeah. Thank you for the answer, Connor. Now we move on to Hunter. So Hunter, my next question for you is, what is the impact of the pandemic on your work and the workplace? Oh, wow. <laughs> Hard, actually. Um, for me, atmosphere is a very big thing. So moving from the office to home was, it's actually still to this day quite hard because I, I very enjoyed having people to work with in the office for me and chatting, the communication, the ability to work together. Um, working from home, especially when things have happened, caused a lot of lost communication in my original team before Ford. I mean, there was very hard to chat about things you normally would do. Um, how not to like it's for me it's hard to um message somebody in the example because i don't know if i'm interrupting a meeting or a um, moment of concentration during a hard task they're doing um as well as like my place isn't set up for working at home at the time um, i'm like working and moving right now to get a place so i can actually set up how to work um just also the stress of covid at times um like recently, I, I had to go get testing because some, somebody in one of the places nearby was confirmed and I was in that area. Um, has caused a whole lot of stress, honestly, with all that going on. Um, so COVID has been a bit of a hard thing to deal with. It's also affected my team and work. And also some has been better. Um, some people on my original group are loving it to a point. They work a lot better at home. I'm not, I'm sort of, better at office and sometimes at home um any more clarification you want or more details of certain area of what could have affected me yes you can uh, it, it, it's hard you lose i think one of the biggest thing of covid overall you lose the team Sometimes, if you don't do so things quickly, you'll fast enough. Why well, was my first thing to tell about in the terms of um, communication started falling apart? And that affects me because I, you get very isolated. Um, for me, that is hard because um, I like structure and routines kept getting messed up, uh, meaning that my um, speed of work goes down a bit as well as trying to find out who to talk to or who I can talk to or communication between team members of all issues that come up get delayed or serve something that like the big example is one of the times we were allowed to go back to the office when COVID we don't not, before the recent incidents um upon the good normally took a day to get things got done in two hours just by talking to chatting with other team members that were there at that time we could sort out issue that normally would take us a day potentially because of people there easy to do quick back and forth communication on problem issues, how to maybe resolve it, go on that angle and that back. And that you, is hard to do from home, honestly, from what the COVID. At all. Okay. Thank you for the answer, Hunter. My next question is for Liam. So Liam, were there any adaptations or changes made for you at work? If so, what were these? Um, so there weren't any specific adaptations made for me at work. I was very lucky that the workplace that I ended up in uh, already had a lot of the adaptations I would have asked for um, put into place for other people anyways. So um, as I was saying earlier, things like uh, wearing headphones to listen to music while we work. Um, uh, it's a quiet office. I'm I'm in one of the low traffic areas. Um, 
there's a quiet room available um, to anyone who needs it already. Um, and they allow for flexible work hours and days. So I only work three days a week at 25 and a half hours. Um, and I can shift those days around however I want. I can shift the hours around however I want. I can do like two full days and then two half days. Um, all that, all of those adaptations were already in place, um, but very, very useful and very helpful to um, improving my quality of life. Okay, thank you very much for the answer, Liam. Now we go to Centaine. Centaine, the next question for you is this. What are some things you think all employers should do to support employees who are on the autism spectrum? Well, um, there is something that can be done to support all employees on the spectrum. However, all employees ha have their own personality, history and background. Yeah. Okay. Right here, I all good sound. You want me to continue or? Well, Excuse me, Sante, what were you saying? I, I, I found that it's probably my notes, so I was up to if you want me to continue with the question or do you want to go to someone else first? You want me to move to the next question? No, I'm no, just I asking, do you want, do you, I can continue now I found my spot with question or you can. Go to someone else and then they can come back to me. Whatever. She's saying she's, okay. she, she missed sure. the notes and now she's just um yeah, found that spot. She can continue if you like. If not, she can you can move on. So. Okay, so I'll come back to you later, Sente. So my next question is for Jack. So Jack, were there any adaptations or changes made for you at work? If so, what were these and have they been helpful? Um, well, GHD had already, by that point, at least in the Melbourne office, adopted um, a sort of agile seating plan and sort of had flexible work hour structure in any case. So in terms of where and how I work, it was already pretty flexible. It was just about establishing the kinds of trends that, that I do, the sort of hours that I work like. Um, I take regular short breaks as opposed to just the the hour at lunch um, and what that entails, where I do it, when I do it, the, that, that sort of stuff. Just basically establishing what it is that um, I needed from the system. There wasn't really any new policies that need to be put into place. It was just proper use of those policies. Thank you very much for the answer, Jack. Now we come to Connor. So Connor, my next question for you is, what advice do you have for employers thinking about recruiting people on the autism spectrum? Um, my advice would be to, well, give us a chance to show that we are capable of doing the actual work. Like, uh, I came out of uni without much of an employment history a, or a portfolio and not really knowing how to write a resume, let alone one of them cover letters. And despite that, I did send out a few, some of which to fields that I'd actually studied for, no responses. And then I found out about the DXC Dandelion program, and damn, this is turning into a plug. Anyway, uh, we did, a, you know, they took me on for a three week workshop with other candidates to assess our aptitudes and abilities to do what the uh, job of software testing required. And they judged me based on my ability to learn and apply said knowledge rather than. Uh, how I could fill out a resume or my ability to conduct myself in a job interview. And uh, yeah, uh, just 
look at what we can do, uh, try some of these uh, alternative employment methods. And I hope that has somewhat covered the uh, question. Okay, thank you for the answer, Connor. Now we come to Hunter. My next question for you, Hunter, is what does it mean to have this job? How has it changed your life? A lot. Um, basically, in us um, independence, uh, ability to self-efficient, um, understanding how the world works a little bit, I guess, um, getting to know people in the industry. Um, like I'm self-aligned, I live by myself now, I can fend for myself, bills and all that stuff. Um, it's been quite a lot of help, um, making able to learn how to be more self-reliant is a thing. Um, it also just like mental health a little bit helped with it as um, you, it helped me with um, dealing with certain things that was going on, um, not feeling like you're sort of a, um, a waste of energy as um, getting a job is really hard from my experience, especially in something you find much more enjoyable in as um, it's, there's a lot of things with like, getting this job is help with. Uh, just how did you, it's just hard to figure how to narrow it down the um, answer um, I need to give. I guess, uh, what? Continue, sorry. Uh, I think the best would say is the ability to be able to make your own choice and decision without, with more of your self-control, more control of the decisions you make because you have an income, you have the ability to use the income for what you want, even if you have something that does go to bills and the other things. and. In and all, but you get from it, like you get to know people from your work, you get to make connections, able to get people to see who you are as who you are as well, to a point, as well as to be able to make um, a living um, ability to live by yourself and if you want to and have that freedom of choice, like choice and control. A lot of it is down, you get more control for me. And that's very helpful because um, I'm not sure to autism, but, uh, or to autism for everyone, but um, one I've noticed for a few people with me and a lot is um, control or structure and the ability to control your environment to a certain level is very helpful for stress relief. There's, there's less variables that keep picking up or trying to rely on variables or outsources or hoping something happens the way you hope it will work based off unknowables is frustrating and stressful. Um, so this is the job does help with a lot of that. Um, I, don't know. Um, I think that's it. I don't know, as this can go for a very long time of rambling on this one. Okay, thank you for the answer, Hunter. My next question is for Liam. So Liam, what is the impact of the pandemic on your work and workplace? Um. So I had a bit of a unique experience with this one. Um, I I had been uh, in an internship with my company uh, in the prior year for about three months. Um, but when they actually employed me was, um, it was February of 2020, uh, early, early mid-February, I think it was. Um, and just six weeks after starting my employment, uh, we were all thrown into lockdown uh, for 10 weeks. So I ended up spending more time in lockdown than I did at the office in my first few months of working. Um, so I I did make it through that. I'm still employed by them. Uh, luckily, it, it, was, uh, it was all good. Um, but um, as someone else was saying, um, we definitely did lose a sense of uh, our team during that uh, during that time. Um, we were it was you would send a message to somebody and it would take them potentially hours to reply back to you instead of walking over to their desk, um, which was very uh, bad on time critical issues. Um, but other than that, 
yeah, we did sort of lose a sense of, you know, that sort of team that we had, uh, even with um, daily meetings and stuff like that. It it did feel like our team was slowly falling apart. Just there wasn't that there wasn't that thing there. I can't quite describe it, but it was it was missing, and it made things quite difficult for not just me, but for all of us. Okay, thank you for the answer, Liam. Now my next question is for Jack. So Jack, do you have a mentor or someone that work or that supports you? Uh, I'm lucky enough to be supported by quite a few of the people that I work alongside, but the two biggest names are my um, BGL, my business group leader, who basically heads up all the drafters in our office. Peter Van Hulse, um, he was the one who put up his hand and said, I'm willing to take up um, a neurodivergent employee. Um, it was something that the company was very new to, and he was the first one to really show interest. And that's the other half of how I ended up in that team. Subsequently, um, I went and I mentored under the man who's now my team leader, Mario Masinko, and he's continued to be um, a day-to-day -day support. Um, like I talk to him every morning, go through um, how, how I am, what sort of things I'm working on today. And that's just a very good grounding agent to go into that day and to you know, be effective and productive. And really the two of them have just constantly been very understanding and, and trying to do their best to get into my head as to what I need and, and basically just for us to work together so that we're a happy team. Thank you very much for the answer, Jack. Now we come to the next question. So my next question is for Connor. So Connor, what has helped what has helped you to keep your job instance achieve sustainable employment? Um well I would owe a lot of thanks in that regard to having third party support personnel. Like we've got a test lead that I can come to with my dumb questions or if yeah something's been explained a bunch of times and I don't want to ask the uh, person on my team once again I can go to them and we also got our autism support consultant who can act as a middle person if there's something that I'm not sure how to bring up to one of my colleagues or help me uh, frame it in a more professional manner or simply proofread the occasional email every now and then. And they are once again third party, they're DXC rather than Services Australia, so I can trust them not to snitch on me. And uh, a prime example of uh, assistance, uh, something that uh, Liam touched on earlier about sensitivity. This isn't my story either, but in the early days, uh, one of my colleagues was seated directly under a ceiling light and the glare was bothering him. So he spoke to our autism support consultant who then went and spoke to someone somewhere else in the building and they got the light turned off. I, yeah, it's, and regardless of how accepting and accommodation, accommodating the apartment as department has been on the whole, it's, there's still that pressure to act professional in the workplace and it's, Good to have people that I can go to without uh, fear of judgment. 
Okay. Thank you very much for the answer, Connor. And now we come back to Santane. So Santane, my question for you is this. What are some things you think all employers should do to support employees who are on the autism spectrum? Well, as I was trying <clears throat> to say a bit earlier, um, there are some things that can be done to support all employees on the spectrum. However, all employees have their own personality, history and background, and these vary as do their needs. I'm having, uh, taking some, per, part, part of this is from personal experience as well as, so I, uh, I know that um, but having it work uh, rather than an interview person because it gives you a chance to say what you know um, rather than um, talk about what you know because that's something I find difficult. But um, having mentors is really important, particularly when we've never been in a, a workplace as serious about employing us. Like, um, they are uh, here at some talk and I'm sure other places as well. Um, they can help us when we take things to literally, when we're unsure about what is required, and in some social situations, and particularly those involving conflict. Um, being aware that we are challenged by new people, routines, or change of routine, um, environments and situations, that which this mean doesn't mean they should be avoided, but it's important that co-workers understand that it's not telling for us um, that someone who's not on the spectrum. Um, educating other employees before we get there helps them to understand us and what they might expect. Um, <clears throat> However, people on the spectrum can defend the tolerance of touch, smell, sound, clothing, communication, what's offensive and what's appropriate. Like all employees, we want to feel included, respected and valued. Asperger's syndrome isn't who I am, I'm Sintain. Okay, thank you very much for the answer, Cillian. Okay. Really appreciate it. Okay, so my aunt, my question in the group is, would anyone like to tell us about the work achievements? So Hunter, you can go first. That you're most proud of, your work achievements. Uh, <laughs> probably, oh, uh, got it. I'm trying to figure out where this is about confidential issues. Um, I was pretty much took in charge of a main application in my former job as a dating access management um, for one of the more experienced people that used to do a lot of it and became the um, actual go-to person with it, as well as the outside team that related to that application um, and getting, solving issues quickly, keeping under control, communication with um, other people to try and make sure things are going well and um, I think when I was moving to to my new team Ford I think the biggest thing was that the other team that I was working with outside of my team actually was very respectful happy that I worked with them and a little bit of I guess a little bit sad that um, I was leaving as I knew it pretty much inside out for the area of the application that they needed help with I think that was probably my, my proudest achievement I can think of the top of my head evolving my time in the next measure of, control, of um, computing to that application. It was the main application that linked to a lot of other ones. Um, that's the best I can say about things that I can't talk about. Okay, thank you very much for the answer, Hunter. Now we move on to Liam for the question. Um, so, uh, I guess achievements within my workplace, there aren't too many. Probably the biggest at this point is um, I am currently, uh, not currently, but uh, there is talk about me um, being trained in the software development side of things at this point. So I will um, eventually be moving up from a QA tester to be um, to become a uh, developer, um, and 
there are a number of reasons for that, mostly because that's where I want to head, but also my um, supervisor knows how well that QA developers who become software developers, sorry, QA testers, how good we are as software developers because we know both sides of the bridge. So um, that's pretty much all I can think of, really. <laughs> Okay, thanks very much for the answer, Liam. Now we come to Jack for the question. Um, it's hard to identify singular moments that I'm proud of. It's just, um, there's obviously, I do a lot of computer-aided design, CAD, um, and creation of drawings, and there's just a lot of different programs and a, lot, and a lot of different functionalities. And it's just stepping back and saying to yourself, um, like six months ago, I would have needed to talk to five people to understand a single thing that I just did. Um, just being able to, to, to learn my job is for, for me an achievement, so. Okay. Thank you for the answer, Jack. Now we come to Connor for the answer. Connor, if you're speaking, you're on mute. Please unmute yourself. Ah, much like uh, Jack had said, uh, basically how far I've come in this job, like, when I started out here, I did not have the faintest clue what I was doing, but I've been at this job for three years and now not only do I know the basics, but if I run into something that I'm not sure how to handle, I know where to look up that information or who on my team I can talk to about it or yeah and it, every now and then a newer person will come up to me and ask how do I do this and most of the time I will actually have a useful answer to give them so yeah just my uh me Doing this now is very different to how I did it back then and much better words. Thanks very much for the answer, Connor. And now we come to Santane for the answer. Okay, so, well, first of all, a um, bit of background about, we've been looking for it's about five, best part of five years prior to being employed through the piggery and just the first step of getting employed with someone on the spectrum was not an accepted team and I've been employed for nearly four and a half years. Most of it, um, probably most of it full time and just pretty much being able to help a sow out when she's having trouble giving birth to her pig was is just rewarding and just being able to get up for work each day and, have a purpose for my life, um, rather than just being looking for work all, all the time, just being employed, yeah. Pretty much. Okay, thank you very much for the answer, Santane. So my proudest achievement is that I was, when I joined the Autism at Work program at Enable India in 2015, I was the only female with 10 boys. So I stood out by doing well in the training. And then I got selected for SAP Labs in July 2015. So that time until today, I've been working for SAP Labs in Bangalore, India, and I've gotten to host events and speak at many autism conferences and events. I'm part of ACA Advisory and Charitable Trust as an advisory board member. And I'm also part of the Rotary Abilities Club in Bangalore where I do a lot of volunteer work outside the workplace. Thank you very much. And now I hand 
over to Orion. Kelly, over to you, Orion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, look, personally, uh, let's, for starters, let's uh, thank everyone so far for their contributions. Don't go anywhere, guys. I, I want to continue this conversation. Asha, you've done a, a fantastic job, and I really appreciate uh, the thought you've put into those questions. Guys, you might be able to help me. And, and for starters, can I just get everyone to turn on their cameras? Everyone turn on their cameras. Everyone turn on their mics. I, wa I want this to be a, a, a joint discussion. Uh, the worst thing you can ever say um, probably to a, a group of people like us is uh, everyone turn on your mics, but let's do that. <laughs> you guys have done an amazing job. I think what I really want to point out here, and I'm sure Asha understands this too, is, okay, so look, my job's content creation. So this is kind of what I do, right? I'm working. This is me at work. But for you guys uh, on this discussion, this technically isn't what you do. This isn't your job, okay? So for the people watching, for the, you know, the thousand or so delegates watching right now who may be neurotypical and may be employers, they've talked, the, the panel have talked about the hurdles, which is number one, getting a job, which incorporates a CV, a resume and interviews, and number two, retaining a job. So this is a great indication here of, of people showing people we have jobs, we're bloody great at them, we enjoy them. We're committed to them, but then you're also seeing an insight, which some may say who aren't, I'm autistic. Some may say, gee, some of these people, they're, they're, they seem a bit nervous or they seem, they seem like they're maybe struggling to say what they want to say or communicate in the right way. It's like, yes, uh, it's called a neurodevelopmental disability. It's called being autistic. So I think this is a great insight into why these people are bloody great at their jobs and what would happen, they might not have got these jobs if this was their job interview. Now, they've all done amazing, amazing work, but I think it's super important for employers to understand that you can't just expect autistic people who may be the best employee you ever had to get that job the same way everyone else does. And we, we have to acknowledge, and they've all spoken about the ways they got their jobs. We have to acknowledge here, this is an insight into it's it's challenge right you guys i'm assuming you guys felt a bit challenged or a bit nervous or a bit awkward i mean you, you know in this kind of engagement but what's clear is the passion that you have for your role and the passion you have for making it easier for other people and i i, I hope and you know i know connor you've got some stuff you, you want to get off your chest and and i I'm, i want that to happen uh you know you've got some great remarks yes i can see you my friend uh, do you guys agree that it's important for employers to understand that what it's taken for you to do this today it, it sh is an insight into what you're prepared to do to actually not only get a job but to help other autistic people get a job this isn't easy connor what what do you think um uh, yes well i think it is a uh, very important to talk about these sorts of things and uh, have summits like this one because as it stands a lot of the conversation around autism is uh, about autistic children and it's that is very important we do need to make sure their needs are met and set the conditions for them to thrive and properly develop in and then there's the conversation of uh, how much do we tell them versus how much we let them figure out for themselves, less, uh, less that they uh, get the sense that, oh, I'm this, therefore I have to act that way. These are important conversations to have, but something that is often left out is that these autistic children grow up and as we have seen and heard throughout this conversation, that journey does not end there. Hundred percent. And did did everyone on the panel? You're, there's no rules here, guys. Not say names. You just jump in when you want. There's no rules, my friends. Did did you guys all feel safe to disclose when going for all, not this job, all jobs? Hey, I'm autistic. When you, it, I don't care if you were trying to get a job at McDonald's. Did, 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 did you guys always feel safe to tell every job interview that you are, you know, who you are, or did you feel like you had to hide that? Um, 
I, I was given advice not to disclose that I was autistic to prospective employers. Sometimes I did if I felt particularly comfortable, but a lot of the times I didn't. Hunter? Um, a little bit similar with Jacqueline's. Um, less on being told not to, more just um, not honest. I, I was diagnosed with Asperger's before it got added to being autistic. And um, later I got um, qualified to be autistic. But like um, by this culture and what I see in the world, telling somebody you're not normal is like the biggest thing they'll lose you a job interview. For my experience of what I've seen around everywhere, mm. as. Um, like before I got DXE, I went well, and they the person there is shoot. So he mentioned that, and he told me to talk with a person he knew inside the disability um, job help working people to help me get the job there and help me build up something. And that's how I learned to be a bit more open about autism with your job interviewer people, and that yeah. from there led to the DXE program. The, basically, the manager there was very supportive, but it was a bit of a hard time that job at times. Mm. Um, and I think for, for employers watching Hunter and Jack, for, for employers watching, this is important to know that here's, there's a, we are a group you know, of a, a minority who aren't even able to feel comfortable to be ourselves when we're trying to contribute to an organization and get employment. Centaine, have you always felt accepted and liked and approved by everyone in life through in jobs and employment or has it been a battle for you to be uh, you know accepted and uh, approved by well it was a battle at first but i've always been i'm a christian so i've always felt like i need to be honest and bad luck if they but they want to find me well i've got Asperger's, but i'm a person as well so yes sing it sister amen my friend amen good for you uh, and you're doing an amazing an amazing job Asha, what about you? I mean, because we talk about a lot of times we can get caught up in there's one way of advocating for autistic people, but it's a global thing and different parts of the world have different views on, on autism and, and looking on it. How has your experience been in, in your lifetime with acceptance and disclosing and being, being able to be yourself? Okay, so let me tell that when I was born in Africa and did my schooling there, the kids were very acceptable, including the school staff. Even though I had a problem, they used to encourage me to participate in extracurricular activities. But after I moved to U.S. at age nine for a better life, it was very difficult to get accepted because the kids were different and didn't understand what I was going through and why I was receiving all the help with the public school system there. But after coming to India, people have understood what is autism. They took the time and initiative to see my self-advocacy PowerPoint. And then now they have accepted me on the team. They recognize my strengths and skills, and they encourage me to go further in the company and continue working for SAP Labs. And then in April of every month, my manager wears a blue shirt to represent me in the team meeting and asks, why are we wearing a blue shirt? So the colleagues say it's World Autism Awareness Month and to represent Asha because she's autistic on the team. That's awesome. That, that is fantastic. And Asha, before we uh, before I have to start to say goodbye and wind this up, did you have any closing remarks? Did you have anything you wanted to just quickly mention before we close this up? Yes, I did. So I would like to sincerely express my thanks to all the panelists who took the time out of their busy schedule to participate and all of your answers were very interesting i wish you all the best with the future please stay safe and healthy during this covid19 pandemic situation thank you ash you've done a great job guys before we go is there any like is there any if anyone has one quick thought or message they want to convey to the people watching i'll give you the floor you don't have to but if you have one <laughs> quick thought please go for it if you don't i'm going to move on so connor did you have something you wanted to say um unfortunately i already gave my closing statement in that last answer about great great yeah that's fine well, i'm happy to hear that it. so um, i'll try to give this shot universe autism as well is a change it's my way of looking at it is it's a different way of thinking and you can't just put that it's this type of scenario and this is how you fix it, how you deal with it. Treat them as people, try and understand each person individually, then have it. Don't treat them all as they have the exact same issue and try to make it all one issue. It's not that way. It's just a different way of looking at the world. 
This is the best way I can say how to look at autism. Liam, did you have anything I'm you gonna, to say? I was just very quickly going to jump in there and add that the saying, if you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism is probably the most correct statement that has ever been said. <laughs> very true. That's definitely Jack? true. Jack, thanks for joining us. Did you have anything you wanted to say? Uh, yeah, just to tack on to that, that um, really, if you're, if you approach um, working with autistic people with, with humanity, if you just step back and say, what it is it that this person needs, then that's not only a positive experience for them, that's how you should approach life in general. Every single person is different and probably needs things that don't fit into the need box that we've assigned the normal person. And really, it's just autistic people have much more overt needs. 100%. And Santane, can I thank you, uh, you know, for being so open and honest today, Santane? I think it's important, and I'm sure you'll agree that that no matter no matter who you are or where you are, find yourself on the spectrum. No one should be able to tell you what you can and can't do. And if if there's a job you love and you want a job, you should go for it. Do you agree? Yes, definitely. Hey, thank you, Santane. You can go on your smoko now. Okay, <laughs> have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it and thank you uh thank you, asha you've done a phenomenal job uh, thank you everyone we really appreciate it nasha liam centane jack connor hunter it's been a, a great session